grab no problem. Nice land over. So do you need a four-wheel drive vehicle to go overlanding? I see so many people these days purchase these big rigs that will take them anywhere, yet 99% of the time they are, are doing stuff on trails like this, which is really nice. This is just down here in Orange County. It's a nice creek over here. We're going to go to the top of this mountain, as you can see. But just about any vehicle will do this. Um, this is a TRD off-road, so it does have a little bit more ground clearance and some all-terrain tires and a skid plate and whatnot. It does have a locking rear differential, which would be useful if you're in snow, which we've taken this in snow, um, and it did fine. So um, the point I'm trying to make is 99, if you're jumping on the overlanding bandwagon, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're not actually going to need such the rig unless you're a real off-roader and you've been doing it a while and you actually know that you're gonna go rock climbing, uh, crawling, you're gonna need uh, to go through mud and snow and stuff like this up up steep hills and different um, obstacles, basically different features on the trail, then you might need four wheel drive. And when you need it, you 100% need it to get through the trail. But I encourage you to explore with whatever vehicle you have. So we're gonna head up this trail and see what we can get ourselves into. So as you can see, we've made it to a remote location, but we've made it up here in this two wheel drive pickup truck. And if you look at the trail, it is, let's go back down here and look. It looks pretty steep. Look at that. Look at that. Did you look at that? On video, it probably doesn't look steep at all, but here we are. Haven't had to use the locker. And um, definitely, I've only used two-wheel drive. So we got to this view in two-wheel. So we're gonna continue up and see how far we can get. Nice Land Rover. As you just saw, there was a big Land Rover that was lifted, off-road tires, all the overlanding accessories, the rooftop tent, the lift, the all the you know gear to retrieve the vehicle if it got stuck. We're going to take the two-wheel drive TRD off-road Toyota Tacoma 2019, and we're going to go up here. Can you show? And we're going to go all the places that the that big lifted Land Rover, the best of the best. Um, just went and we're gonna do it in the two wheel drive. I'm not even gonna lock the differential. So just showing you that 99.9% .9 of the time you do not need, when you need it, you need it. But you can do this probably in a Subaru Outback, 100% in a Subaru Outback, 100%. So just letting you guys know this is the majority of the trails in Southern California. So let's see what we can get ourselves into. These are just nice, easy trails to, to get around. Um, like that guy, you know, it's not, it's not like the Rubicon where you need to go rock crawling. A lot of these Southern California um, fire trails like that. And that's all the trails that I've been on basically. There was one really rough trail that I went to when I was in Joshua Tree and it wasn't even that bad either. So. This is uh, the majority of the stuff that I've seen out here, unless you want to go seriously wheeling and you have to look out for those places and really, really look for them. But still, the time between when you're actually overlanding, a lot of the time you're actually just on the road driving to and from the trail. So here, check out the views and where we're going. So, yeah, it's pretty. All right, moving forward. Here's another forerunner. All wheel drive off road. Two females. <laughs> a lot of females up here. So this guy's got a rig camping up here. 
problem with it's not one way so you have to watch people coming down okay thanks balls right as we were talking about it some guy came down the hill pretty fast so you have to be careful because this is out and back so it's not a you have to come back down the same way you came up so there's going to be traffic going both directions so you have to watch out for people so that guy was going pretty fast coming down the hill and i was going pretty slow and we missed each other but if I wasn't paying attention and he wasn't paying attention, then it, you probably could have ran into each other. And there's also, we've seen two or three dirt bikes coming down as well. So they're a little bit faster than the cars usually. But, um, so watch out for people. All right, we've reached the top basically. Still haven't had to use the locker. The Toyota's doing good. Don't need four wheel drive to do this. We've seen everyone up here so far has been in four wheel drive. I could literally do this. <clears throat> if the Prius had more ground clearance, I could do this in the Prius, but point is, I know you need the four wheel drive when you need it, but most of the time you don't need it. You only need it when you need it. So these trails, you don't need it. Okay, so here, of course in the video, it doesn't look like anything, but Here's the normal trail, and then here is a shortcut that the four-wheel drive guys use. Um, I'm gonna pull up it just to articulate the the axle and see see how far we can go. The only thing that bothers me, I'm not gonna go all the way up because there's a sharp rock kind of sticking up right there, and I don't want to. There's a big dip and then a sharp rock. I don't want to jab the front bumper or the oil pan into that. But I'm just gonna pull up onto this. And um, so I just locked the rear, so it's off. Now we're gonna turn it on. VSC turned off, pre-collision, da, 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 unavailable. All right, and then we're just gonna turn up this dude. So the rear is locked and really need to get outside of this to do it. So I'm gonna get her to go outside. Watching out for this big, I didn't want to hit this thing, but once I got rolling, it was pretty easy. This is just a stock, this is a stock two wheel drive TRD, um, two wheel drive with a rear locker. And this stuff is big, like, like this, this hole here is up to my, it's essentially up to my, <laughs> of course I kind of drove around it, but um, this stuff is pretty deep. I mean, this is the top of this. And this is pretty steep stuff. And of course this, I tried to go put my tires right on it and just go up, up through here. It did really well. I just decided to just keep on going. And then that's another articulation here. This is a big, this is high obviously, and this is pretty low, so. Yeah, no four-wheel drive, no problemo. <laughs> so we're just gonna go up this small little hill here. It's pretty rutted though. It's gonna flex the rear axle a lot. So um, maybe just get a little further down so when I go up, you can see the rear tires and stuff. But I'm just gonna lock the rear differential and uh, crawl up this hill. So it's really easy.
So we made it to the top of the trail and we've got some protein chips, some hamburgers and sweet potato fries that I made last night and that we made last night. So are we technically overlanding? What do you think, Theo? Here's the food. And then here comes another explorer. Let's see if he can get around the, the trail, even though we're sitting there. We'll find out. It's a nice FJ. I think he, I think he can get by just fine though. Let's see. A nice FJ. All right, so we're completely, hey Theo, we're completely done with the the trip and we basically went up to the top of a mountain in two-wheel drive. Everyone else was in their four-wheel drive vehicles. So I know that was just an off-roading trail. It's not technically overlanding. Overlanding is kind of like being self-sufficient um, on a long-term road trip um, through you know various obstacles. And the point of it is to be, uh, in, is per the purpose of it is to enjoy the journey and it's not to get to the destination. So do you need an all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive vehicle? Probably on certain occasions, but for 99% of the time, you don't. We kind of proved that today by taking this truck in a lot of like super rutted um, areas. And this is on the stock tire, stock suspension. If you actually added um, some off-roading tires, especially to the rear, that would be su super helpful. Theo, Theo. So basically, um, even if, if you added tires, that would make it even, even, even better. So, you know, the point of the video was to say, if you've got a vehicle, just go on a road trip, pack some food, pack whatever you need to make yourself self-sufficient where you can camp out. I've used the Prius. I've camped in the Prius before on a, on a, on a two, two nights in a row. You can lay the seats down flat and you put a cooler under the passenger seat for the pillow and then you put a pillow on top of the cooler and you've got a flat area and then I've got a trifold sleeping mattress and you can actually sleep in the back of the Prius. People live in them. So I use that for a, um, I went to the national parks in California. So the point was you don't have to have a four wheel drive vehicle to do overlanding. Uh, you can have a motorcycle, you can have a bicycle, you can have uh, whatever you want. So use what you got and go do it. Okay like and subscribe.